um, today we'll be talking about trading and multi-trading in C Sharp. So first of all, what is uh, multi-trading in C Sharp? So a trade is actually uh, the process at which the CPU or a program takes to process your um, task application. So in, for example, um, I can have the CPU or a program itself, you know, um, implement multiple tasks in the sense that, okay, for example, if I have something like, um, if I have um, a method, in this case, a person that I want him to like make me breakfast and then uh, my breakfast, I probably want something like, you know, I want him to like make me some eggs and um, I also want him to make me some coffee. So in this sense, I want him to like, make both things for me so i can have my breakfast right and then the person proceeded to make the eggs first and serve the eggs and then proceeded to, proceeded to make the coffee and then later serve the coffee so that means he cannot make both eggs and coffee at the same time right he has to make one first then serve it then make the other one then serve it right that is synchronous process so one process depends on the other the coffee but cannot be made until the eggs is done right so one process needs to wait for the previous process to be done before the other process can take off how about if we can have both process run together at the same time and they can deliver the results so that is where the process of multi-trading comes in here so but before we dive into the uh, mod trading code i would like to show um the regular synchronous programming we have always been doing which is um the regular programming before um the idea of mod trading will make sense so going into the, into the code um let me see um i'll try to create a function here uh let me call that um okay void uh make egg make eggs function Okay, so this is, I'm employing this function here to make egg, right? Then I can say I want um, maybe like, I want uh, five eggs. Okay, let's iterate through that. Uh, int i equal to one. i is less than six. i plus plus, right? Okay, then I want him to like, uh, console print out the uh, eggs that is being made. Hmm. Okay. Okay, making egg. Okay. Then right after that, uh, it should write another message that the eggs are make are made rather. Okay, so I'll create another method, employ another method that will make my coffee for me, right? Let's call that make coffee. Okay. I want another five cups of coffee, you know, for me and my family, right? Okay, coffee is made. Now I will go ahead and call and serve both methods to the client here, which is called the method uh, make eggs method, then make coffee method, right? So if I call this method, if I call these two functions now. First of all, it will go ahead and call the make eggs first, executes everything I have in the make eggs. Then once that is done, it will go ahead and call the make coffee, then executes everything and serve it. So if we put a debugger on that uh, and we start it, okay, let's even just run it and see what uh, results we have. So um, we can see that it's going to make five eggs and five coffee, but it wouldn't start making the coffee until after the eggs are made. So look at uh, the printout here. So you can see making five eggs, make, making egg one, egg two, egg three, egg four, egg five, then eggs made. Right after the eggs are made was when it even jumped into making coffee. Making coffee one, coffee two, coffee three, coffee four, coffee five. So it means that those threads depend on each other. 
coffee will not start being made until the eggs are made, right? How about if we want to, if we want to, if we want this two process to start making um, asynchronously, you know, or Simon, uh, yeah, to start making them like in two different threads. So let's try and assign those. So in this case now, it's just like me employing two people. Okay, like I'm employing guy one, right? This is guy one here. I'm employing him like, okay, you, you are making the eggs, okay? Then I'm employing guy two here, like, okay, you, you are making the coffee, right? So now there are two different people. That way, hopefully, the task can be faster so I don't get late to work. I can have my breakfast faster. So the process of making eggs does not delay the process of making coffee. Both processes are running on their separate threads. So in this case, what I'll just do here is um, I'll cancel this uh, two method here and I'll just create a thread object. Uh, let me say thread um, egg maker. Okay. Then I'll just assign the job of um, the uh, making egg into, you know, as a parameter there, as a delegate parameter there. So I've employed the egg maker. It's going to run on a different thread. And then I'll have to employ another person, another thread, thread coffee maker. Then I assign the job. Right, so now these two threads now, they wouldn't affect each other. What I just need to do is to call the threads to start. So, okay, egg maker dot start. Go ahead and start your job. And the moment you are done, at every time you are done with every task, just bring it to my table. Come and serve me. Then I'll call the coffee maker as well. You need to go and start your job. So now we have two threads running at the same time. Let's see what results we have if we run the um, program. So you can see here that one does not stop the other. The egg maker one made the first egg, deliver it. While the coffee maker has immediately done making you know, the coffee and deliver of all five coffee. And then the egg maker also, you know, then continue to um, make their own eggs and deliver it. So even though this coffee maker thread is faster, if we hadn't used multi-threading, we would have to wait till the whole egg processing is done before we could get our coffee. But in reality, we could actually get the coffee faster. So that is the idea of multi-threading. So it's like making use, uh, make like in real, in real life program, you can make one user, you know, a request for multiple resources on an application. So the user don't have to wait for one process to be done before the other process is delivered. So whichever faster process is could be delivered will be delivered first, and then the, it also um, uh, increase performance in the application. So if we even run it again, we might get different results uh, because they are running on different thread. And uh, now we have X1 and X2 made first. Then Coffee Man made his own all coffee. Then the Egg Man, you know, delivered the other third coffee. Uh, later on. So that is basically the idea of multi-threading. And um, here I can also um, have um, both thread to slip here. Okay, let me try and put something like um, if i equal to 3, right? So if it hits 3, if, I, if the first egg is the third one, I want the, you know, the egg maker to wait for 30 seconds. So I'll say um, thread dot sleep for 30 seconds. That's 3,000 milliseconds. Then also I'll do the same thing here. That if the coffee maker, uh, if the sec if the coffee maker is on the second coffee already, then the thread should also sleep for 30 seconds. So. We'll see what results we get there. Now you can see, you can see that right, the first egg maker, 
Okay, let me try and put something like 10 seconds so you can have time to like see what exactly I'm talking about. Okay. Here as well. So now I'm going to run it. And I'm, I'm, I'm having this uh, 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 operation delayed for 10 seconds here. The moment it hits the second coffee cup. And I'm having this operation delay for 10 seconds the moment it hits the third egg. So let's run it and see what we have. So <clears throat> the first egg and second egg and third egg is done. So it's going. this is waiting for 10 seconds. The first coffee and second coffee is done. It's waiting for another 10 seconds, right? Then the eggs completed and eggs made and coffee completed, coffee made. So these are the idea of multi trade is a way of manip manipulating multiple process to run at the same time. So one of them don't have to wait for the other before um, they execute their, uh, you know, um, operations. But there's still one problem about this, this, this right, uh, programming. So one thing is that now that I've, I'm employing two threads, now I'm using more memory because I'm creating two threads in one CPU right that is more workload on the cpu fine it might deliver faster but memory wise it's putting a lot of work on the cpu have you considered that we can actually go back to the traditional level traditional way that we did it initially which is before we actually use the trade before we even actually introduce the multi-trading so which is um running the program synchronously where we actually call both methods but then we can have it run asynchronously make it run on one thread but then they still don't depend on each other right that is where we um actually have asynchronous programming and in the next class we'll be talking about asynchronous programming where we can actually have just one thread and multitask so these two methods here will not wait for each other whichever one is done first will deliver the results to the client regardless uh even though uh, they are running on one thread so in the next class, we're talking about asynchronous programming. But for the meantime, I want you to uh, play with um, multi-threading that we executed here and then uh, see, understand better how it works. So thank you very much.